So now I want to talk more about blocks and scope. Basically, we've mentioned um, scope a couple times. So basically, this is referring to the scope of a variable. Like, where is a variable, um, where can a variable be used in a program? So variables are, so far what we've seen are variables defined in the main function. So, let's, so we have our int main, and then we have, so we've been seeing variables that are defined mostly at the top. So say we have some variables here. So the, we would say that, this, that these variables have, the scope of these variables is in the main function. So this would be called local scope or block scope. This variable int number is available to use in the scope or the block of the main function. Um, later on, when we're going to start writing our own functions, so if we have some functions up here, then the scope of this variable is in the main function and not in these other functions. Also, a variable can't be used until it's defined. So let's say that we have some code up here. So say we have C out and something, and maybe we have a calculation number is equal to something. But then what if we defined our number down here? So this isn't going to compile because we're trying to use number here before it's been defined. So the scope of the variable, like the variable is only available to use after it's been defined. So this would need to be defined up here. And so that's why variables are often defined at the top of a, a program. Well, at least the short programs we've been writing. When we start talking about functions, variables are usually defined at the beginning of the function. So basically, variables can only be used between their definition and within the block's closing brace. Um, in longer programs, it's actually better to define the variables close to where they're actually used. The programs we've been writing so far are short, so we've been defining our variables mostly at the top of the program. But once you start writing longer programs, you might want to start defining your variables closer to where they're actually being used. And then if we look at, say, some if statements or maybe some loops, variables are only if we, let's say a variable is defined inside an if statement, the variable that variable that's defined inside the if statement is only available to use in the if statement. So basically, when we go into the if statement, so we go inside the braces, so let's say we have if, and then let's say we have some condition, and then here's our braces. Um, let's say that we have a variable defined here. So this variable would only, all, this variable comes into scope when we go inside the if statement braces. So when we go inside these braces, this variable comes into scope, and then when we leave the statement, so we go outside of this brace, the variable goes outside of scope. So in other words, it's not available to use anymore. So let's look at this. So we have if income is greater than or equal to min income, then we're going to get the number of years at current job. Um, see out how many years have you worked at your current job. And then notice how we have int years defined inside our if statement. Um, see in years. If years is greater than min years, you qualify. Um, else see out, you must have been employed for more than min years to qualify. So this years variable is only available inside the blocks of this if statement. If we try to, like let's say we try to use this variable, like let's say down here we've exited the if statement, and let's say we try to say C out the years, that's going to cause a compilation error because this variable isn't available anymore. It's gone out of scope. So let's look at some code. Um, let's say that we have Let's say that we have a variable, so we have int number, 
and we want to ask the user for this number. So we're going to do a C out and then we're going to say what, no, oh, let's just say enter an integer. Well, I'm going to say whole number. So enter a whole number, because you have to think about the user's perspective. A user of your program might not know what an integer is. So enter a whole number and then C in number. And then I'm going to do an if statement. So if number is greater than zero, so if whatever they enter is greater than zero, we're going to um, do whatever is, we're going to do whatever is inside of these braces. So let's do, and I'm just going to keep this really simple. So if number is greater than or equal to zero, um, I'm going to do something that's going to look a little bit weird, but I'm going to define another variable called number. So int number, and I'm going to do C out, enter another whole number. Oops. And then I'm going to see in number. And then I'm going to do a C out and I'm just going to display the number entered. And then let's do number um, end line. And then let's go outside of this if statement and do another C out and display, um, I'm just going to say first number entered. And this one I'm going to say number entered in, well, let's say second number entered. So this one's first number entered. And then this is number end line. All right, so this looks really weird because we have int number here outside the if statement, and then we have int number here inside of the if statement. So let's um, compile this and see what it does. And then I'm, I'll explain it a little bit more. Okay, so enter a whole number, let's just enter three, enter another number, let's enter four, and then it tells me second number entered is four, first number entered is three. So basically what's going on is I, so I have a variable outside of the if statement with this name number. I have a variable inside the if statement with the same name. So Basically, variables, I can have variables with the same names as long as, as long as one of them is inside an inner block and one of them is in an outer block. And basically what happens is, so I have this variable int number on the outer block, and when I go into the inner block and it, and now, and this int number here is declared, the variable in this inner block becomes visible and the variable in this outer block becomes hidden. And then when I exit this inner block, the variable that's in the inner block just kind of goes away. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. And the variable in the outer block is now visible. So this is actually not a great thing to do. I just wanted to show you because it's something that you can do, but this isn't a great thing to do because it's kind of confusing. So if we have um, int number here, let's say that we let's say that we met these to be the same and so we thought that when we got this um, second number from the user that we were actually storing this number to this variable here, but we're actually storing it to this one. Um, that could cause a logic error in your program that's hard to find. 
So it's good to, even though you can do this, it's good to call these different things. So let's say that this one is number one, this one's number two, so then they're distinguished. So they're, so we're specifying um, which one is which. So now this one is number one, this one's number two, um, then this one's number one. And then let's say that, like, let's just do another C out right here. So C out, and let's see what happens if we try to use this variable that's defined inside this if statement, outside the if statement. So let's do, um, let's just do another number. So second number entered um, outside block, and then let's do number two and line. Let's see what happens. All right, so I got a compilation error because it, let's read what it says. So number two is not declared in this scope. So what that means is that number two, like when I tried to use this variable outside the block, it's out of scope. Like this variable is only in scope inside this if statement because that's where it was declared. So we can't use this variable outside of this if statement. So let's take this off. And this is the same case with loops. So let's say we have a loop while um, number is greater than, well, let's just say, yeah, let's say while number is greater than zero. Um, and then let's do a, let's, actually, let's do this. So let's look at this for statement. So let's do a for statement. So let's do an int i equals zero. So let's do one. And then i, as long as i is less than number one, so I have number one up here that I'm getting from the user, so I'm going to do a loop that goes from one until the number that the user entered, and then I need to update my loop here, or I need to update my counter. So now I'm going to do, um, let's do sum plus equal um, i. So let's just sum the numbers that they enter up to, well, let's sum numbers up to like one, one plus two plus three plus four up to the number that the user entered. And now I need a variable for the sum. And I'm gonna actually declare this right here so it's closer to the for statement. So let's do int sum, and we're gonna initialize this to zero because it's an accumulator. Um, and then I think that's all that I need. Let's also see out um, I just to see what the count is. I'm going to do an end line. Okay, let's compile this and run it. Oh, and I need to change this to number one. Okay, so let's run this. So enter a whole number, let's enter four, enter another whole number, two. So this is going to sum the numbers up until, and I actually want to do less than or equal, so it sums all the way up to whatever number I enter. Right now, it was only going to three because I just had I less than number, which was four, so it summed one, two, and three. Let's compile and run this again. So four, two. So now it's, um, so I don't, I'm not printing out the sum, but I have CL I is, um, and then it's telling me what I is. So what I wanted to show you with this is that this int i is declared inside this for loop. So the scope 
of this variable i is the for loop. So if we try to use this i outside of the for loop, it's not going to work. So let's let's just see what I mean. So let's try and see out i is outside of this for loop and um, and see what it does. Okay, so it's giving me this error. So it says I was not declared in this scope. So the scope of this variable I is inside this for loop, and so we can't use it outside the for loop because it's not in scope anymore. And so with these for loops, you'll often see counters used like this, so they're declared inside the for loop because you're only using that particular variable for the for loop to keep track of the number number of times the for loop runs. So you'll see this pretty often, but this doesn't have to be declared inside the for loop. This could be declared outside the for loop like this. And then we could do a and then we can use it outside the for loop because its scope is after it was declared inside uh, braces of the block. So in other words, we can use this i, this variable i, after it was declared, so after here inside this program up until this um, final curly brace indicating the end, end of the block. So let's do our c out i is i and then end line So it compiles now, and let's just do four, two. So this is going to go through this loop. So i equal one, prints out i. And then the reason why this last one says i is five is because when i was four, this statement was still true. So it ran through the loop again, incremented i to five, and then it found that it was false and it exited. So then down here with this C out statement here, it did I is and I is currently equal to five. So that's what it displayed. You'll want to think about the, the scope of your variables when you define them. You need to decide how you're planning on using your variable, where you need to use it, when you define it, because let's say that we wanted to have access to this counter later, so this int I. And I think it's okay to use the i inside the for loop if you were doing, say, int i, because that's just pretty easy to see that this is just the um, counter for this for loop. But if we're using it outside like this, it's probably better to call it something else like um, count. And then this is declared outside. So, and then this count would be less than number one, count plus plus, and then we have count here. So basically everywhere that we had the i, it's now count. Um, so if you needed to use your counter variable from this for loop outside of the for loop, you would want to define it outside of the for loop. But if you were only needing it for the loop itself, then it would then it might be better to define it inside the um, for loop statement like this.